It is common practice in football these days for teams to play young versus old games during training sessions, splitting their first team squads in half based on age. It's a bit like the lads versus dads games that you used to get at Sunday League Junior teams, except all the players are professionals and you don't get bald middle-aged men relieving all the pent-up anger from their recent divorce by viciously trying to scythe down a 13-year-old just for nutmegging them. Anyhow, whilst young versus old games routinely take place within individual squads in behind closed doors training sessions, I thought it was quite an interesting concept to ponder who might win in an old versus young match if you could select from every single player in world football. And naturally, by that I mean picking the best players in each of the two age groups. I didn't just get mad with power and start picking Prince Philip and Susan Boyle for the old 11, or Stormzy and Greta Thunberg for the young 11. Although, in the interest of full disclosure, the young 11 is thrashing the old 11 in that scenario based on the early inclusions. No, no, every player in both 11 could quite reasonably be described as world class. And whilst I've no doubt that you will disagree with some of my selections, I've tried to be diplomatic and keep as many people happy as possible. I'm not going to go through every player as I would in a typical video, given that there are twice as many players as an ordinary 11, and that would mean the video would be about 30 minutes long. Instead, I'll just go through position by position, so goalkeeper, back four, midfielders and forwards in each 11 as quickly as possible, before posing the question of which side would come out on top if the two teams were ever to actually meet in real life, as well as attempting to answer that question myself. I have split old and young at age 27 to 28 because I think that's when most outfield players tend to hit their prime, and by that logic, I hoped it would result in two fairly evenly matched sides with a plethora of talents available to both. So the old 11 can include anyone aged 28 and above, and the young 11 can include anyone aged 27 and below. Since we like to break social norms here at HITC7s, rather than the viciously ageist trope of youngest first, we'll start with the golden oldies, none of whom are actually remotely old in real terms just by footballing standards. Between the sticks, somewhat unsurprisingly, the golden oldies really do have the pick of the bunch. At least 8 of the 10 best goalkeepers in the world are aged 28 and above, and I would argue all of the top 3, namely Manuel Neuer, Alison Becker and Jan Oblak. You can take your pick with any of them. All are fantastic shot stoppers, all are relentlessly consistent, and all would walk into 99% of teams within world football. Neuer has had the highest peak and the biggest impact on the game, Oblak is the most consistent and I believe he is the hardest to beat, and Allison is fresh off the back of three successive sensational seasons and is a fantastic and complete sweeper keeper. I've gone for Neuer, partly because I almost always pick Oblak, and I feel the big German deserves some HITC7 to love, but also because he has been magnificent for the last 18 months, and his self-belief combined with his skill set means he could waltz into any team, such as this one, and work wonders. So he gets us started. The back four, from right to left, reads Danny Carvajal, Sergio Ramos, Virgil van Dijk, and David Alaba. Whilst the over-27s are stacked in terms of the goalkeeping position, it is the under-28s who have the edge at right-back, with a hefty majority of the best players in that position at this moment in time falling between the ages of 20 and 25, as far as I'm concerned at least. Danny Carvajal is still a fantastic fullback though, and he's partnered by his club and international teammate Sergio Ramos for obvious reasons. Ramos and Van Dijk have had the odd public spat in the past, but hopefully they can put their differences aside, using all that wisdom that comes with experience, to form an extremely formidable centre-back partnership. At left-back, despite stiff competition and the fact that he has played at centre-back for most of the last 12 months, I still think David Alaba is the best left-back in the world, and the most complete full-back on the planet. Moving into midfield, the holding midfielder for the over-27s was among the toughest selections in both 11s. In the end, I went for Casemiro, who played an important role in Real Madrid's title win towards the back end of last season, and has looked really impressive, even in a somewhat out-of-sorts Real Madrid team during the early parts of this season. Although, it could just as easily have been Angolo Kante, Jordan Henderson, or even Fernandinho got the nod. And yes, for once, I am leaving out Sergio Busquets. I know, blasphemy. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. I still love you, Busky, and you're still the finest pivot of your generation, but only a pig-headed fool would claim that you and a number of your teammates haven't declined in a big way over the last couple of seasons. Ahead of Casemiro, as you can see, we have Kevin De Bruyne and, I suspect, somewhat controversially, Lionel Messi, but we'll start with De Bruyne and come to that one in a moment. I mean, 
I say we'll start with De Bruyne, but this one should be fairly short and sweet. He is the best midfielder in the world, and he's 29 years old, so obviously, he starts for the over 27s. Before I discuss Messi's inclusion as a sort of false 9 turned number 10, often with the starting position of an 8, I think it would just be easier to reveal the entire rest of the over 27s 11, which looks like this. On the right, we have Cristiano Ronaldo, playing in a position which he hasn't done with any regularity in well over a decade. On the left, we have Neymar, and through the middle, there is Robert Lewandowski. Now, I'm not a complete idiot, I know that this 11 has ended up with the two greatest players of this generation, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, both playing out of position, but the alternative was basically to leave out either Ronaldo or Neymar, or I suppose Lewandowski, if I played Ronaldo through the middle. If I left out any of those players, with the possible exception of Neymar, there would be pandemonium in the comment section, of that I've no doubt. The easy thing to do would be to leave out Neymar then, stick Ronaldo on the left, Messi on the right, Lewandowski through the middle, and pick an extra central midfielder. But that would be wrong, because prior to his recent injury setback, Neymar was actually playing better football than either Messi or Ronaldo this season, so I don't think I could justify leaving him out in truth. It is worth adding that whilst Messi did play almost in central midfield at times only a couple of scenes ago, his presence there now would leave Kevin De Bruyne and Casemiro with an awful lot of work to do in midfield and it's one area the under-28 would no doubt look to exploit. Before I come to the under-28, I have also picked a 7-man bench for the over-27s 11, because, you know, I can't help myself, which reads, Yad Oblak, Stefan de Vrij, Jordi Alba, Luka Modric, Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane, and Karim Benzema. Of course, there is an absolute wealth of talent that is forced to miss out as is the case with both 11s, and just some of the honourable mentions for the over 27s include the likes of Alison Becker, Tony Kroos, Angolo Kante, Ilkay Gundogan, Hyungmin Son, Luis Suarez, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Eden Hazard, Antoine Griezmann, Gerard Piquet, and Sergio Aguero, among others. Now we come to the young guns looking to knock their more seasoned rivals off their perch. I tell you, I'm selling this so well that I reckon if we get Eddie Hearn on board and enough public pressure, we could probably actually make it happen. Anyhow, starting in goal, as I said, the oldies are blessed with a far larger number of options, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any good or even great goalkeepers under the age of 28. The two finest, in my humble opinion, are Edison and Gianluigi Donnarumma, aged 27 and 21 respectively. Donnarumma will no doubt go on to become the best goalkeeper in world football, but for now, I would rather have Edison between the sticks, albeit only just. The back four, once again, from right to left, reads Trent Alexander-Arnold, Rafael Varane, Ruben Diaz, and Theo Hernandez. That is one hell of a backline, with a couple of world-class centre-backs, and mounds upon mounds of creativity and goal contributions coming from the two full-backs. Rafael Varane's inclusion will be rubbished by those who only watched him in the Champions League against Man City last season, when the reality is that the Frenchman has consistently been among the best centre-backs in the world for a long time now. Partner him with Ruben Diaz, a brick wall with no lack of technical ability, who I was championing on this channel long before his move to Manchester City, and you have a six-yard box that ought to be bordering on impenetrable. The same arguably couldn't be said for the fullback positions, both of which I must admit were incredibly tough decisions, particularly at left back. At right back, I could have picked anyone out of Ricardo Pereira, Joao Cancelo, Alvaro Odriozola, Rhys James, and Ashraf Hakimi. Meanwhile, left back was a real nightmare due to the existence of Andy Robertson, Alfonso Davies, Ferland Mendy, and Sergio Regulon, among others. I tried to be diplomatic by ensuring there was at least one Liverpool representative in the fullback positions, and whilst perhaps slightly weaker when running towards his own goal, I do think Alexander Arnold is better than Robertson. Left back might as well have been selected based upon the flip of a coin, since every one of the five players I previously mentioned could mount compelling cases for starting. Leaving out Robertson will outrage Liverpool fans, just as leaving out Hernandez would have outraged AC Milan fans. And leaving out Davies, well, I'm probably alright leaving Davies out, since Germans tend to be quite mild-mannered and reasonable. I'm, I'm not stereotyping an entire nation of people, I just mean in the comments section of HITC7's videos. In the end, I went for Hernandez, since Liverpool fans already had Alexander-Arnold, and in terms of this season alone, there hasn't been a better fullback in all of world football than Theo Hernandez. 
The midfield looks a lot more balanced than the over 27s with Joshua Kimmich, who I believe to be the best whole midfielder in the world at this moment in time, at the base of our trio with Frankie de Jong and Bruno Fernandes ahead of him. I suppose I've already justified Kimmich's inclusion, and the only question mark that ever existed over the German in regards to this 11 is whether he would start at right back or in midfield. The same goes for Fernandes who, at this moment in time, just about selects himself. With a drive and will to win that is matched only by his expertise from 12 yards out, Fernandes has been second only to Kevin De Bruyne in terms of midfielders in the Premier League since his arrival from Sporting Club de Portugal, and that is high praise indeed. The last of three midfield spots was the one that didn't pick itself, as far as I was concerned, and potential candidates included the likes of Paul Pogba, Mateo Kovacic, Sol, Fede Valverde, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Jack Grealish, Mikel Marino, Leon Goretzka, and many, many more. Out of the lot, though, I think the best shout is Frankie de Jong. Having been utterly stupendously brilliant at Ajax, de Jong didn't quite so much disappoint during his first 18 months at Barcelona, as simply having failed to quite have the impact upon games that had been able to at his former club. This season though, even as Barcelona have endured a pretty wretched start to the league campaign by their standards, the Dutchman has impressed. An excellent technician with a first class footballing brain, de Jong is my kind of footballer. I've long said that he's too talented not to come good at the Camp Nou, and I think he's doing that now. So he starts. And finally, our front three, whilst not quite boasting the awe-inspiring star power of the over-27s, still packs an almighty punch. I thought the right flank and the centre four positions were both incredibly straightforward. Kylian Mbappe was the first name on the team sheet for the under-28, despite the fact that he is still only 22. You'd have to go back at least a decade to find a player more impressive than Mbappe between the ages of 16 to 22 possibly to Cesc Fabregas, Lionel Messi, or Wayne Rooney. And once Messi and Ronaldo bow out, barring a miracle, he will become the best player in the world. Harry Kane was an automatic selection as well as the best centre-forward on the planet that isn't called Robert Lewandowski, and quite possibly the best all-round centre-forward in the world at this moment in time. It still amazes me that there were people commenting on my videos claiming that he was finished as recently as the summer in a prediction so bad it would make Professor Carol Sikora cringe. Kane has been magnificent this season, with 21 goal contributions from 16 appearances in the Premier League, and I should point out that his equally impressive partner in crime Son Hyung min only very narrowly missed out on a spot on the bench in the over 27s 11 to Sadio Mane. As I've said previously, I think it's tough to split the two of them. The left wing, unlike the other two forward positions, presented a real headache. So much so, in fact, that I genuinely had quite a bad migraine whilst I was trying to finish the 11. I mean, it might have been dehydration or a lack of sleep, but I'm pretty sure that the left-wing dilemma was a part of it. Candidates included the likes of Jack Grealish, Serge Gnabry, Usman Dembele, Leroy Sane, Raheem Sterling, Christian Pulisic, Mikel Oyarzabal, and Jadon Sancho. That is quite the collection of talent, and personally, I don't believe that there is any one name that stands out. I think Sane could possibly be the most talented, Oyarza Bell and Grealish might just be my favourites to watch, and I suspect Dembele would take it without a fight, were it not for injuries, perhaps as comfortably, as Mbappe and Kane do. If you'd have asked me 12 months ago, there isn't a chance in hell that I'd have picked Marcus Rashford ahead of the lot of them, and I sincerely hope that I'm not being swayed by the fine work that the youngster has done off the pitch. With little to split the candidates, however, I tried to go on form, and for the player that I felt would best suit the system and the 10 players that I'd already selected. On those grounds, I don't think there's a better option than Marcus Rashford. Make no mistake, he made huge strides last season, bagging 17 goals and 7 assists in 31 outings in the Premier League alone, but I think he's shown hints of hitting yet new heights during the early parts of this season. He already has 7 goals and 4 assists from 15 league appearances, and that's despite Bruno Fernandes being on penalty duties. He's hitting levels I wasn't personally convinced that he was previously capable of, but now that he's playing the way he is, it wouldn't surprise me to see him push even further on. What's more, he has tremendous pace, and given the creativity in this team coming from the fullback positions and from midfield, combined with the pace of Rashford and Mbappe on the flanks, I suspect they would be pretty devastating on the counter-attack. The seven-man bench for my under-28-11 reads Gianluigi Donnarumma, Nicholas Zula, Alfonso Davies, Leon Goretzka, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, and Romelu Lukaku, with extremely honourable mentions for the likes of Jules Koundé, Jack Grealish, Marquinhos, Serge Gnabry, Hakim Ziyech, Joao Felix, Paul Pogba, Paolo Dybala, Amerik Laporte, and Leroy Sane, among many, many others. 
Needless to say, I didn't bother picking any managers for the two teams, since there aren't many managers under the age of 27. Or the age of 27. But if I had just the remit of picking an old and a young manager, I would have to go for Julian Nagelsmann as the young boss and Mircea Luchescu as the old one. Unless, of course, I can tempt Sir Alex out of retirement. So who would win the Golden Oldies, with two of the greatest players of all time in their lineup, or the Young Guns, with pace plenty and a lethal forward line? Of course, I'd love to hear all your thoughts down in the comments, and that's really why I made this video. For what it's worth, I think the older 11 would edge it by virtue of a slightly superior back 5, particularly in terms of the solidity of their fullbacks, and obviously, the jaw-dropping talent within their forward line. A starting 11 that features Kevin De Bruyne, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Neymar and Rob Lewandowski surely can't be kept out for long. And in Theo Hernandez and Trent Alexander-Arnold, I suspect the likes of Neymar, Ronaldo, Messi and De Bruyne would get some joy in the wide areas. I mean, just imagine Messi and De Bruyne's deliveries into the box and vision supplying the likes of Ronaldo and Lewandowski. That would be a pretty frightening prospect, even for the most accomplished of opposition. On the flip side, you have to say the older 11's midfield could be left wide open at times, and with the counter-attacking power of the likes of Mbappe, Rashford and Kane, they could be incisive on the break. The creativity from the two fullbacks in the younger 11 is special, and in Edison, even their number one is capable of picking a pass and grabbing an assist. Also, if they get a penalty, which is always doable up against Sergio Ramos, you'd bet your bottom dollar on Bruno Fernandes dispatching from 12 yards out, even up against Manuel Neuer. All things considered, my money would be on a 3-2 win for the older 11, although I don't doubt they could be caught out if Nagelsmann played his cards right. In 10 games between the two teams, I suspect the older 11 would win about 7 of them, give or take. But what I think doesn't really matter, so go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Before I leave you, since I made both 11s to try and be diplomatic, if I was picking both teams as the actual manager and my life was on the line depending on the result, this is what I'd pick for the older 11. Oblak comes in for Neuer, simply because the Slovenian almost never makes a mistake, so I'd feel even more relaxed with him between the sticks, and yes, Neymar has been left out in the name of balance. I very nearly left Ronaldo out, and I wouldn't be particularly fussed between those two. I just went for Ronaldo starting due to superior match-winning credentials. Meanwhile, it's Luka Modric who comes into the midfield as Messi moves out wide onto the right. Modric is just an incredible little footballer who can do it all, and he's looked close to his best during the early parts of this season. For the younger 11, I've switched out both of the fullbacks to try and make the team more solid given the wide players they would be coming up against. So, either Joao Cancelo or Ricardo Pereira comes in on the right for Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Alfonso Davies starts on the left in place of Theo Hernandez. The midfield is unchanged, as are two of the front three, but on the left flank, I've opted for Raheem Sterling. Sterling still takes an awful lot of flack, and there are undoubtedly elements of his game which he could improve, but people tend not to focus on the areas in which he is genuinely world class. There are few players in the world with better attacking movement, and consequently, Sterling scores a ridiculous number of goals. I'd just about lean towards him over Rashford if pushed for that reason, because I'd feel more confident about him being in the right place at the right time when called upon. If I'd have picked those two teams from the off, then I'd have had people going nuts at me in the comments, but I figure that those of you who stay tuned in for this long tend to be a bit more understanding of nuance, and at least can understand my thought processes, even if you don't necessarily agree with every one of my selections. As I always say, it would be boring if you did. I shall leave it there since the video is already rather long, but thank you all for watching. Destroy that like button like David Cameron allegedly destroyed a dead pig's mouth if you enjoyed the video. Let me know how you think an old versus young world footballing clash would end up in the comments, and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for the one and only HITC7s before it's too late. Too late for what you ask? Who knows? But I wouldn't want to take any chances. You can also find me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s.